All of you know water, right? Who doesn't know water? You, I drank it just now. That is water, no? This is what you studied. H H O. No, water is something very live. This is water. This is the water structure. What a complicated structure with a lot of loose bonds here and there. A lot of loose bonds, very hungry for anything. So what we did, we put nano silver particles in these loose bonds and got some nano silver water, simple nano silver water, it's water with some nano silver particles, it's very simple to do that. Might cost about five rupees a bottle, big bottle. You take 15 ml of that three times a day, malaria gets cured in three days. Dengue, anything. And I, I have been running after this, the great government people, anybody is there in authority. I didn't get permission. So I had to go to Africa to do a study. We did 100 patients, 100 patients survived. Not statistical science, 100 patients survived, and we have published that. Even then, but nobody bothers. Nobody bothers. But the companies are after your blood because they can't sell antibiotics. The antibiotics produce resistance. This doesn't, because it doesn't kill the germs the way you think it does. Very interesting. Now, but more than that, this is a live structure. Very interesting. It flows by whirling only. Water does not flow by lamination. Laminar flow does not exist in water. Water is alive. If you see water going up a tree, you pour the water at the bottom, the tree goes up and the water goes up. So beautiful. You must know when they magnify it and show you, water is so just going. And then finds a crevice, it goes there. And somewhere it goes. It goes, it goes to the tree top. So we did something with water. This <clears throat> what is this? Now physiology. This was your heart when you were in the mother's womb. There were no heart. It was two dorsal vessels. Now you all teach your students heart pumps blood drug across the right. Right or wrong? Correct, no? If the heart were to pump blood, think for a little while. If the heart were to pump blood, you wouldn't be here at all. Because you didn't have a heart for 20 weeks in the mother's womb. Who pumped blood? Now the madam is saying, ah, ah, ah. Do you think, you didn't think about it earlier? Huh? No, now you think. Now I wanted to think something more. And that is, this water is very interesting. Very, very interesting. And that water keeps you alive. Now this, these two tubes, your own passing water, that is water is blood. But unfortunately, blood is not just water. Blood has colloids and suspensoids. What are colloids? You all know, right? Electrical charge, atoms, which are either anions. Anion means one extra electron. Or cations, one electron less. Now, very interestingly, this is how you are living because the cations, same, they, you know, repel each other. The anions repel each other. So your blood doesn't clot. Now, if the blood clots and you die of a heart attack, do you know our treatment? We give rat poison, warfarin. Warfarin is rat poison, did you know that? The same poison you give to a rat, you give in a small dose to a man. No, you don't have to do that. You will have to just drink water with a different pH. You can alter the pH of water and drink the mixture of water, then the anions and the cations get activated. They'll never clot inside the vessel. Clotting has to happen only when the vessel breaks. But inside the vessel, if you have to clot, your blood has become very thick. You've eaten so much and you've not drunk water at all. And the water you drink is not the right variety. If you drink the water here, this, you know, this is just, what is this? Chlorine. You just boil this water and drink it, you really get chlorine smell. And you call it as mineral water, you pay 90 rupees in a five star hotel. <clears throat> So what does the heart do? Have you seen this bathtub? You have seen it, bathed in it, but not observed it. Today you go to your hotel, let some water there, put the stopcock. And when the water is to a certain level, stop the water, pull the stopcock, watch the water. It goes, 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 you don't see it. When the end comes, boom, it, that's called whirling. And the whirling gives it energy, and that energy makes the water flow. So in the human body also, 
The heart cannot pump blood. It's a 300 gram muscular structure. And you have 8 lakhs kilometers of capillaries into which even an RBC cannot flow easily. So it requires 142 horsepower for one pumping. So first pumping itself, the patient will die. So you're all alive here. That means it's not pumping. What does the heart do? Have you seen anatomy here? Heart muscle is a peculiar structure. It's got a twisted muscle. It's called higgledy piggledy muscular. So what does the heart do? It gives it a twist. So from the swimming pool, through the veins, the blood is sucked into the heart. Not does not flow. It is sucked positively into the heart. And then it gives a twist, and it moves on to the artery. And then with whirling, 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 it goes. I'll show you. See, this inside the vessel, if you see, this is how it flows. Not laminarly. You're teaching your students laminar flow of blood. If you really understand laminar flow, the outer lamina doesn't flow at all. The inner lamina flows a little faster. Inner still faster. Inner moves fastest. Now you give a vasodilator for lowering the blood pressure. What happens? Nothing happens. Only the inner core runs a little faster and kills somebody. That's all what happens. <laughs> this is very interesting. It should have come first. This slide came later. Recently, somebody did 3,000 original studies in medicine to show what we are doing to the patients. See that? More than half, 60%, are not of no known effectiveness at all. And the beneficial is only 3%. Can you believe that? 3%. That means 97% of the patients, you send them to meet their maker in heaven. How many of you have heard the science of rheology? Good, good, good. It's a new branch of physics. Rheology deals with the fluid flow. And if you know rheology, you will forget Newton's laws of determining spread, it will be gravity, blah, 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 blah. You put liquid helium in a bottle, or not bottle, a bowl, and keep it on a table. Liquid helium. And you will watch it. The second day, the helium starts coming up. There's a little helium at the bottom, liquid helium. It comes up, goes up, walks up, walks up. Goes to the brim, oh, it falls down. You hold liquid helium in a silicon bottle and hold it up. Leave it there. 24 hours later, this helium leaks through the silicon bottle. No holes there. So all the, the gravity, gravity, you know, that you mugged up for, for passing your intermediate physics or PUC physics, you should forget it now. Now in the PUC, teachers teach you something in physics. Even when I was a student, they were teaching. Laminar flow in a tube cannot produce lateral pressure because if it produces lateral pressure, it can't flow further. Cosine 90 is zero. So I mugged it up, mugged it up. Otherwise, I won't go to the medical college. Mugged it up, mugged it up, mugged it up. Went to the physiology class. Then Sarada Subramanian said, blood pressure is a lateral pressure exerted on the vessel wall by the flowing blood. <laughs> yeah, I mugged it up, I mugged it up, I mugged it up. I had forgotten what my teacher taught in physics. Now I'm saying blood pressure is the lateral pressure exerted on the vessel wall by the flowing blood. If it flows really pressure, pressure, lateral pressure, it can't flow. And if it is a laminar flow, it's okay. But it's a whirling flow. See? So what is blood pressure? God only knows. <laughs> I have been I am supposed to be doing research on blood pressure for 40 years. I've written a book on blood pressure. Now if you ask me, I don't know what blood pressure is. This rheology, this rheology is, the flow depends on the kind of fluid inside. You honey, you see the honey, you drop the honey, it just doesn't settle like water, it settles, there's a little peak there, and then you leave it, it settles down. That is why in America, the honey bottle dispensers are different. In our bottle, you honey, you take and then eat it and keep it, the honey goes all over the place and then ants come, this madam knows that. She was troubled by the ants. Now, this is, this is rheology. See now, this is the blood vessel, the real human blood vessel, how blood is flowing. Seeing this also, they say, again go and teach, flowing blood in the laminar flow, there's a lateral pressure. Now see, how the flow depends only on shear stress, on systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, what have you, depends on suspensoids and colloids. Suspensoids are RBCs, WBCs, this, that, and things like that. Colloids are anions, cations, etc., etc. 
Of course, there are crystallites. That's a different thing. A lot of things and not just the... Now, we all taught Starling's laws. And do you know what Starling said? Heart is a peculiar structure. I did vivisection, dissected, dissected, dissected. Did not understand how the heart functions. Now I think I'll confine myself to systole, which I can understand, and forget about diastole. He wrote that, but you teach systole is active, uh, diastole is passive, nothing happens in diastole, blood simply comes back. But Narayana Suktani, Dasha Suktani, 10,000 years ago wrote, beautifully wrote, it wrote, the heart is like a lotus blood, bud, lotus bud kept upside down, with the tip slightly to the left. And at the brute arises a huge stock which takes God's energy to all parts of the body. How true it is in physics today? It is the energy of rheology, energy of whirling that takes blood to every corner of your body. Otherwise, you and I will not be alive. Now we know a New York surgeon, incidentally, he's an Indian, Indian born New York surgeon, a venologist has shown that if you inject a little dye into the vein, the dye jumps from one vein valve to another vein valve. It's called venous dance. He calls it as venous dance. Jumps. And it's sucked in, sucked into the atrium. And this is called a venous dance. And eventually, it comes to the right atrium. This is now published. He has published it just last year. He has been working for 10 years. And this boy is from Bangalore Medical College. 